just before we start off the lectures, just to give a heads up on what was happening this week. So this week, if you see in terms of financial markets, you could see that especially the stock market took a hit this week. The previous week, the equity market was performing very well. But in this particular week, there you could some call it the bloodbath, where the stock market indices reported a you know downfall compared to the previous weeks we were close to 9000 points but now again we have fallen back to 8000 ranges some cited for you know for last week there's a lot of pressure building up and when a movement like you know all of a sudden upward movement comes in a stock market it usually follows up with a moderate pattern where you know you can expect some sell off to come into the market so some say that could be the reason why there was a downfall but what we've seen is there's a lot of foreign investors selling off their stakes in the market. And if you notice, there was a regulation brought in by the CBSL for letter of credit and DA importations. I hope you've been reading news and understanding the impact behind it. Not only now, this doesn't directly influence in terms of our uh, lesson but understand that this is an indication that the government is controlling is trying to bring certain controls to moderate the forex market so forex market is something that you will learn in the upcoming weeks at present there is a liquidity issue going in terms of the forex market we have a in terms of reserves it has come down and a dollar liquidity position is a bit tightening at the moment so as a measure to control it CBSL had bought a uh, regulatory requirement where if you're opening letter of credit or documents against acceptance, you need to keep a 100% margin at the time of opening or at the time of obtaining your documents. So at that point, you need to deposit your money with the bank on a non-interest bearing uh, deposit as a non-interest bearing deposit. So what I what's the impact to the country? you expect imports to slow down it's a method to discourage imports non-essential non-urgent imports understand the word that they use important they categorize uh, around 600 goods are there in this particular list so these are categorized as non-essential and non-urgent goods and if you had seen uh, there's a rapid increase in the prices of white goods at the moment because of this regulation so understand what kind of an environment that we are living in now so in case as a banker a customer approaches you to understand the impact of this you need to be aware all right so with that we'll jump into the lesson for this week So what we've been going through all these weeks is debt capital market and debt capital market instruments. <laughs> you will be one wondering why it's such a lengthy lesson. We have about 62 slides covering this topic because this is one of the core areas in this particular subject, financial market operation. The debt capital market and the equity capital market are at present the predominant markets that you see in our country so when you take a subject like financial market operation you need to have a thorough understanding about these two markets why these markets operate who are involved in these particular markets what kind of instruments you see in these markets and so on okay so throughout these few weeks we've been going through all that in detail types of bonds the types of debentures and then we moved into the types of we even saw the types of risks faced by bondholders yes and last week we were in detail looking into bond valuation remember bond valuation is a, again a very key topic for you all to be aware about in for your in terms of you know talking about your examination yes you will definitely have a calculation on this at least a calculation related to this at least even in your mcqs so bond valuation is a definite area that you need to have a thorough understanding that's why we do the weekly questions for you to practice your 
uh, you know, practice these formulas and the timing for these questions. Your uh, answers for last week will be corrected and sent out today evening. And again, we'll have some another weekly session tomorrow as well in terms of the questions sent out. Again, in that particular question series, it will have somewhat of a weightage on bond valuation as well. And even going forward, I'll add to I'll try to add at least one or two questions on bonds because this is a definite area that you will never see a paper where they've omitted the bond market in the exam paper. OK, so this area is a must. Even if you have an intention of just passing, it's not something that I endorse or not something I promote, but you need to have a thorough understanding in this if you want to call yourself a banker. All right. So bond valuation. Why do we need to know the bond valuation technique? Because bond valuation tells us the real value of that bond based on its future cash flows. Now, if I talk about a bond, you could see three cash flows related to a bond. What are those three cash flows? The initial investment that happens when you purchase a bond, then the annual or the regular coupon payment that happens relating to a bond, and then on maturity, the principal repayment. Okay, three cash flows can be distinctively identified. Now, for you to value the bond, for you to know the investment or the price that you pay for the bond is justified for its worthiness, you need to know the intrinsic value of this bond. You need to know the true value of this bond based on its future cash flows discounted so that you will find the present value. Why? Today, if you are trying to buy a bond, you will make your investment in today's terms. For example, if you are going to pay 1000 to buy a bond, that 1000 is the present value because why you're making the investment today. Let's say this bond is giving you a coupon every year and this is a five year bond. So at the end of five year, you will get your uh, principal repayment. All those are future cash flows. You do not know the present value of it. If you are willing to invest 1000, at minimum, you expect your future benefit to be equal to 1000 rupees in today's terms. Correct? If your future benefit is not even 1000 and less than 1000, will you invest in the bond? No. All right. So just for you to know whether the present value of all these future cash flows, you have to use this bond valuation technique. So the bond valuation technique, because there are future cash inflows, you have to relate it to the time value of money. Each cash flow happens in a future time. So you need to time your cash flow you need to identify the time in which it's happening and the related cash flow as well. So we had four steps in that very first. Now, what are the two cash flows that will happen in the future? The coupon payment and the repayment of the principal. In other words, the face value of the bond being repaid. Correct. So in terms of coupon, now we need to know the timing. We need to know the amount. First, let's see whether we know the amount correctly. For that, we need to calculate the coupon payment for each coupon period. Now, remember, coupon period will differ from question to question. It will be annual. It can be monthly. Okay. So, depending on that, for that particular period, how much is the coupon payment is step one. After knowing the coupon payment for a coupon period, now we need to know the present value of all these coupon payments. That's what we are doing. Step two. Now in step two, having known the amount, now we relate the amount to the time. Coupon payment, coupon payment coming in first year. 
coupon payment coming in second year so forth for each timing you will relate the amount and discount it to identify the present value of all the coupon payments of the bond okay what does n refer here n is the last coupon period if it's a an annual uh, coupon that's being paid out and the maturity of the bond is 5 years n will be 5 it's the very last coupon period very last coupon will come to you on the 5th year okay step 3 what happens there what's the next cash flow face value or the principal repayment now do you need to calculate the face value or the principal repayment no that will be usually given in the question or if easily assumable you know the bond's face value having so amount requirement is not there anymore so what's the next you need to know the timing in which the face value is coming to you again that will differ from bond to bond depends on the maturity of the bond if the bond is a 5 year bond or a 10 year bond depending on that the timing will differ so you will relate the amount to the particular time and then you discount it sorry excuse me <laughs> sorry so you will relate it to the timing and you discount it to identify the present value of the face value now you know the present value of the coupon payments you know the present value of the principal repayment by simply adding these do adding these two answers or adding these two present values you will now get the present value of the bonds future cash flows that's ideally the bonds value bonds true value intrinsic value of the bond or the true bond price that's the fundamental price of the bond that should be the real price so if the market price prices the bond at that very same price we call it a correctly priced bond why there is no any anomalies but let's say the market prices this bond at a lesser value the true value is 1000 but the market says it's only 900 which means it's a undervalued bond the true value is much higher now in such a scenario what's a recommendation you would give to a investor go ahead collect that bond purchase that bond if you don't have that bond in your portfolio yes please go ahead buy it's a market anomaly and it's a undervalued bond but if you already hold the bond do you recommend them to sell no look here the price is not the correct price the true value is much higher you wait for some time so that the market anomaly will be adjusted how will the market anomaly be adjusted when several investors identify that this is a undervalued bond everyone will be keen to purchase that so obviously when the demand increases market price moves up until it matches the correct price of the bond let's say true value is 1000 but the market prices this bond at 1500 if you are a investor who don't have this bond and is really looking to buy this bond it's a no recommendation no don't buy this bond at the moment why it's overvalued but if you already have it in your portfolio it's a sell recommendation why currently the current price is the all time high price it's overvalued it will definitely reduce so better sell now and move out okay that's one of the reasons why we need to know the intrinsic value of the bond now how do we identify overpriced and underpriced we compare the true value of the bond with the market price of the bond why am i again and again repeating this to you so many students confuse what and what to compare in order to make that decision 
for you to know whether the bond is overpriced correctly priced or underpriced you compare these two the bond price that you get by doing the calculation is the true price or the fundamental price then you compare that with the current market price then you will see the anomaly all right then we see what factors influence this bond price so what changes causes this bond price to fluctuate obviously if the coupon interest rate is higher which means the annual interest that you get is higher is it beneficial or loss making or is it a you know not a beneficial situation obviously it's beneficial why you're earning a higher interest so higher the coupon obviously higher the value of the bond you are very keen to buy that bond but if the coupon rate is low value of the bond will be low so coupon rate and the value of the bond go hand in hand when one increases the other also increases return rate or the yield rate and the value of the bond we know always the return rate or in, if you if you take interest rate for that matter is always inverse to the value of the bond if you expect a higher return if your required return is a very high percentage you will always hunt for the bond which has the lowest investment price why that's what will give you the higher yield so there is always an inverse relationship between these two time to maturity and bond price now let's take two of you all both of you all get a bond one bond gives uh, is a is a maturity of 10 years another bond is maturity of 5 years will you pay the same price for both let's say all other factors are same obviously no why because one takes 10 years for you to get your cash flow obviously the present value of that bond is going to be very less so longer the maturity lower the value what's the rationale behind it we know that in the cash flows in the future cash flows the significant cash flow is the principal repayment so if the principal repayment takes very long to come back to you at the end of 10 years you will receive it but the other person will receive it at the end of 5 years more, the quicker you get the significant cash flow more comfortable you are okay so longer the maturity lower the value of the bond so again here when the term to maturity increases value of the bond decreases there has a inverse relationship when maturity increases value of the bond declines write your summary relationships on the side of the uh, on the you know uh, side of your note so it's easy for you when you revise for your exams now when you take coupon and the yield what does the yield tell you what about what does the yield talk about yield tells you your required return okay so what does yield tell you yield is a percentage which signifies or which indicates your required rate of return yield to maturity is you holding an investment until maturity and you're measuring your return correct now that should justify your expectation now if i am a investor and i expect 10% from my investment will i go for a bond which gives me a yield to maturity of 6 which means 6 meaning for in that bond every year i will get a average of 6% if i hold it until maturity 
but i am looking for a yield of 10% per annum all right so that's why i am matching both so yield reflects your required rate of return now myself as an investor i assume i require 10% per annum but there is a bond being issued and that bond carries a coupon rate of 15% a year annual coupon payment 15% is the coupon rate i only want 10 will i be discouraged or encouraged to buy that bond definitely encouraged to buy the bond why it gives me something higher due to the added benefit i will be very keen to buy the bond not only me any investor would be very keen to buy the bond will be willing to pay a higher price than the face value of that bond itself in such a case you call that bond a premium bond if the yield is again 10% but the bond gives me only 5% is it adequate for me no will i look to invest in the bond no i will ignore that bond who will be at a disadvantage obviously the issuer why is now you would ask you know, so the issuer can increase the coupon and issue no why are they issuing at a low price low rate remember it's a annual interest payment for the issuer if the issuer can't bear that interest cost they cannot give a higher coupon rate correct so that's why they would price it at a low coupon rate if they price it at a low coupon rate then they should accept the issuer should be willing to give the bond at a discount than its face value why they know issuers know that the coupon rate is less than the market expectation they know in such a scenario no one no any investors would be interested to buy this bond you don't invest for charity no here you invest with a view to earn profit to you know view to earn return so to encourage the investors you will have to give them a discount why then investors can gain a added return through the difference between the bond price and the face value as well okay that's how they will match it up unto the yield so if the coupon rate is yes lesser than the yield it will be a discount bond let's say coupon rate is equal to the yield will the investor be willing to pay a higher price to buy that bond no i want 10 and the person is giving me 10% as coupon will the issuer be willing to give a discount no why they are expecting 10 i am giving them 10 why am i going to give the bond at a discount so if the coupon rate and the yield rate are equal the bond price will be equal to the face value why i the party cannot demand for a premium or for a discount okay so here in this particular diagram what we have done we have plotted the movement of prices movement of market prices since issuance so this will be the issuing point let's copy this okay so this is the issuing point why am i telling that this is the issuing point look here it says time to maturity which means there is 30 years left for maturity it's a 30 year bond so when it's issued this is the bond price 
when the time to maturity reduces so if i'm issuing a bond today with 5 years to maturity meaning there is 5 years until it matures at the end of this year there'll be 4 years left to maturity so the number of years is decreasing number of years left until maturity is decreasing at, at the end of fourth year it will be 3 years left to maturity so the balance number of years keeps reducing you understand that correct here same trend why the balance number of years is reducing and lastly you will have only 3 years left to maturity 2 years 1 year and it will be zero okay so the movement you need to read from right to left okay so you can see the bond prices at the time of issuance a discount bond will have its price lesser than the face value a premium bond will have its price higher than the face value will it ever fluctuate in between no so it will remain as a premium bond but the level of premium will reduce what do i mean by level of premium the gap between these two can you see here the difference between these two and the difference between these two is reducing can you see that why is this level of premium reducing because time left for maturity is reducing is it correct the amount of premium keeps reducing why is it happening because the years left for maturity is also reducing so for a long period of time you can't enjoy that high coupon it's coming to an end the end is nearing so when the end is closer will you be willing to pay a higher price then as well now here when you buy this bond you had 30 years to enjoy the high coupon correct that's why you are willing to pay this much of a premium but at this particular point you have only 12 years left to enjoy the high coupon so you won't pay a higher premium than what you paid at the time of issuance so the level of premium reduces but on maturity they all converge at one point why on maturity can the issuer pay different different amounts no they all pay the face value of the bond that's why when i define the word principal repayment i always principal i referred it in terms of the maturity date talk about the discount bond again at the time of issuance the level of discount is very very high but over time the extent of the discount reduces why is it reducing again same reason the time left for maturity is reducing so when the time left for maturity is reducing the level of discount will also reduce why is it happening the end is near so you don't have to tie up all your investment in a low coupon giving bond it will quickly mature if you talk about this particular point on maturity sorry on the date of issuance when you invest in this bond for 30 years you are tying up your money in a bond which is giving you low interest not your expected interest correct so they will expect a very high discount but in this particular point still you are tying up your money in a bond which is giving a low interest but only for 12 years so you can't get the same discount that the other investor got at the time of investing 
so the discount extent reduces when it comes closer to maturity on maturity a discount bond also receives the face value of that bond so that will be like the similarity you will have between a premium and a discount bond both of them on maturity receives the face value of the bond only okay now again when it comes to this particular classification when you have to identify whether a bond is a premium pa or a discount bond how will you decide that you have two ways to classify now i want you to write that down in your notes or in your print outs or in your notebook one way to identify whether the bond is a premium pa or discount is you simply look at the coupon rate and the yield rate by just looking at the coupon and the yield and you match it and you can say with the premium pa or discount or by simply comparing the face value with the bond price you can identify whether it's a premium pa and discount you don't always have to do a calculation for this you without doing any calculation just by looking whether the coupon is higher or lower than the yield you can comment on whether it's a premium pa or discount why it's also a good technique for your mcqs or good technique in your bond valuation now remember in a bond valuation you have to do your calculations you can't 100% tell whether your answer is correct but you can cross check your answer with this technique if your questions coupon and yield rate are given and when you look at the coupon and the yield rate you will know whether it's a premium pa or discount then when you do the calculate say it's a premium bond coupon is 10% yield is only 5% you do your calculation you end up with a uh, value of 900 you should know that your answer is wrong why this is definitely a premium bond why coupon rate is higher than the yield in that situation if you get a price which is lower than the face value of 1000 you should know that you have done an error somewhere it has to be higher than the face just another technique for you to cross check your answers all right now today we get into the most technical side of the debt capital instruments or bond valuations bond price sensitivity now this is fairly technical i'll try my best to you know explain it easy as possible but don't worry if we, if there is any few of confusions we will have our usual questions going out every week it's for you all to attempt it's for you all to make your mistakes so whenever you all make a mistake i will correct it for you all and if there is any let's say so many students make the same mistake i will bring up that questions next week and we'll discuss that as well before we move on to the next chapter <laughs> okay now what is bond price sensitivity will a bond's price be the same throughout its maturity will it remain the same no it will definitely fluctuate it will increase or decrease it will keep moving i'm not talking about the true value i am talking about in terms of the market okay the market on going trading prices okay for you to understand how sensitive a bond's price will be what do i mean by sensitive will the bond's price change quickly or change slowly 
that will tell you how sensitive the bond is now so many students when they hear the term bond price sensitive they get so confused understand is a very simple area you are going to see what bond is very sensitive for external changes one bond will be very reactive will quickly change and quickly drop quickly move up or quickly move down but there will be another bond it will also react but the reaction is not so much now for example let's say you hear the same news let's say exams are going to for assumption let's say exams are going to be held next week next saturday sunday you are going to have your ibsl exams that's the news you will have two students both of them are sitting for the same exam one student is very prepared for the exam one student is not even yet studied waiting for the exam day to study now when you tell the exam news to both the students obviously they will react but one student's reaction will be very high why they are not prepared they didn't foresee the reaction will be very significant the other student who's prepared will also react will also be you know oh my god next week is exam but the reaction won't be so significant why they are already prepared so understand a bond always reacts to external changes but the extent of the change will differ now external changes meaning what are we talking about obviously interest rate is the biggest influencing factor for a bond price i told you we are talk, whenever we talk about debt capital those are fixed income usually you don't get floating most of the debt uh, instruments are fixed i sh i showed you the uh, soft logic debenture prospectus as well majority of the debentures or higher percentage of the debentures tend to be fixed a part will come as floating okay so in a fixed interest bearing instrument if the market interest rate fluctuates for example let's say uh, around april or may interest rate was closer to 5% awtlr was close close to 5 i think t bill was around 4 to yeah 4 to 5 percent ranges in that environment let's say a corporate comes to issue a debenture obviously because the market rate is around 4 to 5 let's say 5 they will issue their debenture with a margin for about 7 percent okay assume it's at 7 percent plus 2 than what the market is offering but when we are here right now at this very moment we know market rates are moving up why there was a policy rate change done effective from 1st august 1st september on from mid august the decision was made effectiveness was from 1st september the srr and all okay if you take i awplr was last week closer to 6% okay now we have even moved up from 6 closer to 6.3 now this bond was issued at 7% we know now the market interest rates are picking up whenever the market interest rate moves definitely the bond price is going to react the reaction is same across all by market rates are moving up meaning it will influence an investor why right? when the market rates are moving up i know i should get a higher return but if i have put my money in low interest bearing investments i will have be at a loss so obviously i will react all right that's why yield or interest rate is always negatively related to the bond's price if the interest rate goes up price of that bond comes down that inverse relationship is established that negative relationship is there 
but the extent of the change market rents rate would have increased by 10% okay but one bond price has fallen two bonds both the pr bonds prices have fallen but one bond's price has only fallen by 5% whereas another bond's price has reduced by 15% now do you understand yes reaction is same what's the reaction there is a fall there is a negative reduction in the price why market rate has increased that commonality the similarity is there but the extent of the reaction is different one has negatively reacted but the extent is only 5% the other has reduced but the negative extent is very very high a 15% reduction now in this exercise what are we trying to do are we trying to see whether bonds are sensitive no we know that bonds are sensitive but we are going to find what bond is highly sensitive or what bond is least sensitive why are we doing that we are doing that to understand our portfolio risk now in a situation where market prices move up sorry interest rates move up what will happen bond prices will reduce we know that okay so in that scenario you will want to hold on to a bond which doesn't fall very significantly which means you will want to find a least sensitive bond or a bond with low sensitivity let's say market market interest rate is decreasing it went up to 6 and now again they are controlling and now again it declines to about 4 to 5% when interest rate declines what happens price of the bond will increase negative reaction correct so when the market price decreases sorry interest rate decreases and the market price increases to a bond holder who already has that bond in the portfolio it's a profit right now i can sell at a higher price so in that scenario the bond holder will be very keen to get a bond with high sensitivity why market interest rate fell down by 10% but price increased by 15% reaction is very high relationship is same there is a negative relationship if interest rate falls market price moves up but the extent of the reaction was very high and they will get a higher profit so in this exercise or in this part of the section what you are going to identify or what you are going to learn is to identify the least reactive bonds and the highest reactive bonds in your portfolio i hope i was very very clear okay just to set up your mind now we know a introduction on what we are getting into okay now in this diagram i told you yes relationship is same it's a negative relationship same negative relationship you can see in both scenarios but here the drop let's say this increased by 10% plus here bonds price reduction was only 5 here 15 okay that's what we discussed now what are we going to do we are going to find 
the least reactive and the highest reactive bonds now to find that out first we need to know what factors influences this particular percentage now we need to find why is this bond reacting only by 5% but why is this bond reacting by 15% correct we need to identify that reason first if we find the reason then whenever that reason is there we know whether a bond will highly react or re uh, the reaction will be very low okay now all let's say both bonds have all now what are the common features what are the factors that influences a bond price we just saw that in the earlier section coupon yield and maturity okay yield we were talking about required rate of return now we are going to take that out we are talking about the market interest rate so market interest rate meaning obviously that's going to influence my required rate of return as well why when the market rate increases my required rate will also differ so what are the other two factors influencing a bond's price coupon and maturity so whenever coupon and maturity are different between bonds the sensitivity levels will differ now we are going to talk about coupon rate changes and how it affects the bond price sensitivity now earlier when we were going through in factors influencing a bond price we again saw coupon rate didn't we there i told you if a bond has a high coupon it is very valuable to an investor why it's going to give me a higher interest rate higher cash inflow therefore obviously value of the bond will be higher so it's more valuable to an investor will the investor get rid of a high coupon bond easily obviously no so whenever there is even a slight change in the interest rate will the investor react no why my coupon rate is very high for example we were talking about the 10% coupon giving bond okay let's say around april may when the market interest rate was about 4 to 5% you bought a debenture and the debenture was giving you 10% interest rate annually okay 10% there was another bond giving you 7% but now today when you are in september market interest rates are picking up closer to 6.3 one bond 7% interest one bond 10% when the market interest rate has increased obviously both of them will react but the one who gets 10% coupon is still in a comfortable position why still they are earning a adequate margin but the one who is getting 7 is now at a vulnerable situation now in a very difficult situation why market rate is now coming closer to the coupon rate which means the added extra benefit is narrowing down understand hence the investor who has a higher coupon will not react so significantly to a change in interest rate another way for you to look at is obviously a higher coupon bond is going to give you a larger capital larger inflow to the bond so whenever there is a larger inflow especially in the initial years the value of the bond will be very high the intrinsic value of the bond will be very higher okay the worthness of that bond is high 
so investors treat it as a high value bond so even though the market interest rate fluctuates they won't get rid out of that bond easily why they're still at a comfortable position they know they've invested in a good investment all right so market price changes which investor will react the investor who has invested in a low coupon rate now all other factors are constant with many same maturities we are only changing the coupon here and the market interest rates are moving okay only those two changes are happening in our in this scenario we are talking about okay so in such a contest a high coupon rate bond will be less sensitive low coupon rate bond will be more sensitive i want you to write that somewhere in your note okay now we go to a calculation now we identified the theoretical part of it we identified the relationship we saw the rationale why high coupon bond is more valuable or less sensitive why low coupon rate is less valuable and high sensitive okay we understand the rationale behind that now we'll see a calculation and you know justify that relationship with the numbers okay now you have a question here now i want you to try these questions on your own why am i asking you to do that because in here i have done calculated the prices and given so you can use this same question and practice your bond valuations as well okay identify the bond with a higher bond price sensitivity among two bonds with face value of 1000 and 5 year maturity one with 6% coupon rate and the other with 9% coupon rate when the yield changes from 5 to 4% and 5 to 7% okay so at the yield of 4 you will calculate the price at the yield of 5 you will calculate the price at the yield of 7 you will calculate the price now how are we going to identify the bond price sensitivity the reaction levels see this see, see this diagram the change in the price correct so here we are going to see the change in the price so 5% is like the base case scenario now let's try to apply other learnings as well that we've learned now if you see here 5 to 4% 5 to 7% so it's like 5 is the base case so without doing any calculation just by looking at the question i know yield is 5 coupon is Six. Is the coupon rate higher than the yield? Yes. Before I do any questions, I can tell you the price of this bond or the value of this bond will be definitely higher than thousand. Now I do the calculation. Do I get that answer? Yes. My answer is higher than thousand. So another way for me to cross-check my answers. now i need to calculate the yield at 4 yield at 4 coupon is at 6 still coupon is higher now coupon is very much higher i should know again the price is going to be higher than 1000 and without doing any calculation i can tell you now price will be even higher 
than the 5% price. Why? The benefit is now increasing. Correct? So the premium has to increase more. I can see the same with my calculation here. 7% 7% yield but now 6% coupon now coupon has reduced or is lesser than the yield rate now without doing any calculation I can tell you that this particular bond this particular bond at 6% is now going to be higher, sorry, lesser than 1000. Why it's a discount? I can see that here. Okay, something wrong with my mouse. Okay, I can see that here. Now here it's 9%, okay, 9% coupon. In a 9% coupon and when you compare with 7, it's still lesser. So that's why here it has not come lesser than 1000. Why am I teaching you this technique for you to do an additional cross check? I understand within your time, you will get tense. There can be careless mistakes just for you to have some additional measures to cross check your answers. This won't tell whether your answer is 100% correct, but at least some kind of a satisfaction that you were your justification. You must have done something correct in your answer. All right. Now. I will compare this initial price with this new price and you can see there is a change of 4.4%. It's an increase when the yield rate has reduced from 5 to 4, price has increased by 4.4%. So here yield has reduced by 1%. The absolute reduction. But here 4.4. But here if you take 4.2. Which has reacted more. Obviously this bond buy. The price change is very high. Here the price change is very low. Now let's come here. Five to seven percent yield has increased, so we know definitely price should decline. Can we see the price decline? Yes, we can. How much? What is the percentage change here? Price has reduced by eight percent, whereas here prices have reduced only by seven point eight. Somewhere closer, but still lesser. Now, can I tell that this particular bond is least reactive? Why? It has reacted, but the change is very low. Even when there is an upward incremental change or even if there is a reduction, the extent is very low. But whereas this particular bond is having a very high level of or very significant change, the extent of change is very, very high. What is the reason? All other factors are same. Only change is the coupon. So we can see a higher coupon bond is always less sensitive. A low coupon rate bond is highly sensitive. So 6% coupon will be the higher bond, uh, will have a high bond price sensitivity than the 9% coupon. All right. Now we move to maturity. Now when we move to maturity, we are going to hold coupon as same. We are going to assume coupon rate is same between the bonds. Now it is the maturity that is differing between the bonds. Now, under factors influencing bonds price, we learned that when the maturity increases, 
value of the bond reduces. Why? Obviously, when it's a longer time to maturity, your largest cash flow is coming late. You are more vulnerable to interest rate fluctuations for a very long period of time. Okay. Due to these reasons, the value of the bond is very, very low. Let's say two of you all have two, uh, given two options. Okay. Hold two different bonds. One person is holding a bond with uh, five years to maturity one person is holding a bond for 10 years to maturity okay and the interest is uh, interest rate is changing let's say both of you all have a coupon of uh, assume at seven percent both of you all have seven percent and market interest rate is now 6.3 still it's a negative impact you why Coupon is 7, market price has come up to 6.3. Both now you all are reacting. Your price is falling. But for the investor who has a 5-year bond, he knows, okay, all this is only for 5 years. After 5 years, it will be over. I can reinvest at a much better rate. But for the other investor, good lord, for 10 years, I have tied up my money at a low interest bond so what bond is least valuable to the investor the bond with the longer maturity further you are from maturity least value that bond would have and high sensitive the bond price would be now imagine you have 10 years to maturity and your in, uh, coupon rate is 7 and market is reaching up to 6.3. You will definitely react more because for 10 years you might end up at 7%. Other person only has 5 years to lose. Okay. Your time cost is going to be even higher. Understand? So similar. So yeah, I'm relating that here. So a bond which has a longer maturity will have a very high reaction. Bond which has a very less maturity will have a low reaction. Now we saw the rationale. We are going to justify it with the calculation. Identify the bond with the higher bond price sensitivity among two bonds with face value 1000 and 6% coupon, same coupon, with 5 years to maturity and the other with 20 years to maturity. When yield changes from 5 to 4% and 5 to 7%. Again, use this question to practice your bond valuation so you all can find the price on your own. Okay. So after calculating the price, I'm going to compare the change in the price. At 5% 5, 5 would be my base case. So from 5 to 4, when the yield has reduced, obviously price will increase. You can see bond with only 5 years to maturity, price has increased for the 5-year bond and for the 20-year bond, definitely price has increased. But the 20 year bonds reaction is very, very high. Why is the reaction so high? For 20 years, okay, they have 20 years to maturity and the market interest rate has now declined to 4%. They get a coupon of 6%. The investor gets to enjoy a higher coupon rate for 20 years you understand the benefit but whereas the other person there is a benefit for him as well but only for five percent so five years so the reaction to a 20 year bond is very very high let's see when the yield increases from five to seven percent see coupon is only six a five-year bond is reacting. Yes, there is a reduction in the price. 
but is only 8.1 why okay this 6% coupon is only going to be for 5 years after that the investor will have opportunity to reinvest at a higher interest rate but the other investor has to hold on to the 6% coupon rate for 20 years will he be happy about it when the market interest rates are increasing he will try to quickly sell in the market resulting in a very deep discount you will have you are willing to sell even at the lowest prices possible why you want to get out of this bond right now itself hence the reduction in the price is very very high so see the relation the re reaction is same but the level of reaction is different so which bond is reporting high sensitivity in other words the reaction level is very very high obviously the bond with 20 years why in a positive environment reaction is very good 13% but in a negative react uh, negative environment it can go down up to 26% get it so the bond with 20 years to maturity has a higher bond price sensitivity than the bond with 5 years to maturity okay now we know the relationship between coupon and bond price sensitivity maturity and bond price sensitivity now we are going to combine both now i have a 6% coupon giving 5 year bond and a 20 year bond 9% coupon giving 5 year bond and a 20 year bond there are four different types of bonds given here now out of these four i need to know what is the highest sensitive bond how will you find it will you do calculations and find it simply you can use your rational so first let's take coupon we know the bond with the lowest coupon is highly sensitive okay we understood that so we know these two bonds are not high sensitive why coupon is very high so they can't be highly sensitive yes tenor is different maturity is different but we are going to find the highest sensitive bond out of the four okay highest sensitive bond out of the four so 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 far not these two it has to be either this particular bond or this particular bond 6% bond with 5 years or 6% bond with 20 years why the coupon rate is very less now coupon is same tenor is different how do you find the bond with the highest sensitivity obviously bond with the longest maturity so it will be 6% coupon giving bond with 20 years to mature having the highest sensitivity so this will be number 1 okay then this will be the higher sensitive bond what is the next most sensitive bond now we know this this is also okay what is the next most sensitive bond or here you can see maturity so you have 6% coupon and 9% coupon again you can go down up to 
coupon and check but more than coupon we'll first take the year why you can see here the years are same okay so no point checking between these two we can see a 20 year bond will definitely have a higher reaction why even though coupon is different here the tenor different is very very significant so the second most reactive would be this third most reactive would be this the least reactive bond or the bond with lowest sensitivity would be bond with the highest coupon and the shortest maturity so that would be 9% coupon 9% coupon at 5 years can you see that you can even see this with these numbers out of all this the bond with the lowest reaction would be this particular bond the bond with the highest reaction is this particular bond lowest reaction is 9 and 5 okay now did you understand the rationale behind that how you want to identify whether a bond is highly sensitive or not so sensitive by looking at its characteristics okay you can find look at the characteristics and get some kind of an idea and the relationship between bond price sensitivity okay now here i have summary i have given you a summary for you bonds maturity is positively related to bond price sensitivity bonds coupon is inversely related to bond price sensitivity what am i telling here if the maturity increases bond sensitivity will also be high if the coupon is higher bond price sensitivity will be very low okay i have given you the relationship now if you are actively managing a portfolio okay you are in the financial market you have a portfolio to manage you have market reactions happening you have identified the high sensitive bond in your portfolio but you need to identify some kind of a quantification how sensitive is this bond now i know that this is sensitive but can i give it a number can i quantify the extent of sensitiveness to identify that precise degree of sensitivity now in this entire exercise or in this entire discussion of rashana we understood why a bond will have high sensitivity why it will have a low sensitivity okay and we justified it by looking at the price changes now we are trying to quantify this sensitivity we are going to give it a number this is this much sensitive this is this much sensitive and by looking at the number i can easily figure out what is high sensitive and which is low sensitive to identify or to quantify that we have the concept called duration okay the concept called duration was introduced to measure bond price sensitivity if you can just write it at the bottom duration is a measure for you to identify how sensitive the bond will be now the concept called duration also had several development why it was not easy to come up with a technical measure okay so first we will go through how this development came about so when they talked about duration the very first type that was introduced was the macaulay duration obviously it was introduced by a a financial expert called macaulay okay he introduced this concept called duration what did he say 
he said look here a bond price or bond price sensitivity depended on obviously the coupon and the maturity which means it depended on the cash flow and the maturity all right so he said to identify or to quantify this sensitiveness we will do a weighted average of this cash flow we will weight this cash flow to its time and get a average term to maturity in such a way that we have considered the coupon and we have considered the maturity as well that will give us a number the weighted average will give you a number and from that number we can identify whether the bond is highly sensitive or less sensitive so obviously if that number is very high or very high duration we call that a high sensitive bond if that number is very low it will means low duration then it is low sensitive bond okay that's what macaulay's idea was and that's how this concept called duration was introduced we'll go to the note for this i have elaborated that there now frederick macaulay he said okay good we know the two factors influencing bond price sensitivity but we can't always depend on that to identify the sensitiveness we should have a measure to quantify the sensitiveness as a measure to quantify he introduced duration or it was called macaulay duration to honor him okay so the the now the technical term they use is macaulay duration now in macaulay duration what did he say we have to consider coupon and we have to consider maturity so as a solution what was brought up was we will weight that particular cash flow <coughs> according to its time then both the factors are considered right we will take the coupon into consideration and we'll take the timing as well or the maturity as well into calculation so the weighted average time or the weighted maturity of a bond will tell us how sensitive that bond will be okay that was his idea behind it now let's let's go through his particular before going to his formula let's go through his idea he said look here if a bond has no coupon okay if a bond has no coupon and only principal repayment that is one type of a bond another bond has a coupon repayment coupon and a principal repayment as well both of them have the same tenor now without doing any calculation we know if it's no coupon obviously then it will be highly sensitive with a coupon meaning it's less sensitive why you are earning some kind of a return why is that happening he said if when a coupon payment comes in you are earning part of your investment up front you have invested some money in that bond you are earning or you are recovering part of that investment through that coupon cash flow 
that was his idea so when you wait the cash flow you can see how quickly you can earn your money how quickly you will recover is something like a payback period when you study if you are not into accounting and financial side ignore that but how quickly you can earn your investment will tell you how sensitive that bond will be because if it's going to take a longer period of time to earn what you had invested obviously it's a high sensitive bond why it's not valuable for you moment market changes you are going to react but if you are going to earn what you invested very quickly irrespective of what happens in the market you are willing to hold on to it why because your investment is going to come quickly to you okay so identifying that average tenor or that average maturity was the answer according to him to this particular solution okay now in that he came up with this formula what did he say you take each payment or each cash inflow and weight it by the uh, sorry uh, weight the timing by the present value of that cash flow okay you take the cash flow find the present value of it and you weight that present value weight that present value of the cash flow to the time in which you are going to get okay and when you weight all this for that timing and you add all the amount divide it by the bond price you will find the macaulay duration let's see a uh, uh, example to that i know that will be a bit more confusing the description let's get into a question and understand for example consider a bond with one year remaining to maturity with 1000 face value 8% coupon paid semi annually and interest rate of 10% okay as the coupon frequency is bi annually the bond holder receives the promised cash flow from the bond issuer at the end of half year and at the end of one year okay so here 8% is annual so half yearly you will receive 40 rupees so cash uh, cash flow in the first half of the year is 40 rupees promised payment of coupon interest after 6 months and at the last year end of last year you will get 40 rupees as the final coupon and the 1000 rupee as your promised payment of face value okay let's get the present value of this present value of 40 rupees present value of 1040 we know how to do that you do the discounting technique and then present value of this 40 rupees today is only 38 rupees present value of this 1040 in today's term is only 943 now when i add these two what will i get these are the future cash flows i have found the present value and now i'm adding these two what will be the result the true price of that bond correct we are doing a bond valuation here so addition of these two will give me the bonds value but right now we have the present value in intact so i have the cash flows i have identified the present value now to find the duration i am going to weight this cash flow according to the time why am i doing that because the 38 rupees i will get at the end of 6 months but I'm sorry 40 rupees i will i get at the end of 6 months but the 1040 will com- come only after 12 months so i need to adjust for that time yes through present value we have adjusted but i need to wait it for that time to see how quickly am i earning the investment back okay so here in 6 months i will get 3.88% on 
of the bonds true value now if i add these two 943.31 and 38 the bonds true value is 981.41 correct that's the true value from that true value i am earning how much i am earning 38.1 in the end of six months itself am i correct yes when I add these two, I will get 981. I will get this 38 at the end of six months. So at the end of six months, 3.88% of the true value of the bond will come to me at the end of six months. Okay. The balance 96.12% of the 96% of the bond's true value will come to me only at the end of one year. Correct? So I know the weightage. I know the weightage for this. There is a weightage for six months. Why? 4% of my bond price is coming at six months. 96% of it, it comes in one year. Now, I have to wait and find the effective tenor for half it's four percent or 3.88 for one year it's 96.12 that means on average it takes 90 uh, sorry 0 0.98 years to get my maturity to get my investment back it's not, it's closer to one year, but it's not exactly one as well. Why? Because at the end of one year, I don't get all my cash flows. I get 4% of my cash flows at the end of six months. Therefore, effective tenor or average time for maturity or the average duration is only 0.98 years okay now let's say there is no any coupon payment only the final payment of thousand then when i discount the thousand i will have some let's say somewhere closer to uh, 920 so that entire present value will come to me at the end of one year which means there is no any weightage for six months 100 percent weightage for one year why I get the entire present value at the end of one year. Which means a zero coupon bond, the duration and the maturity are the same. Why? All the cash flows come at one particular point. No cash flow come before the maturity. But in a coupon giving bond, it doesn't work like that. Why? I will get part of my present value up front okay therefore the duration calculated will always be lesser than maturity for coupon giving bonds understand that for coupon giving bonds always duration or macaulay duration will be lesser than maturity but for zero coupon bonds no duration and maturity will be the same okay now in this the answer i will get will come in years why am i getting it in years because i am waiting or i'm providing a weightage to the time correct so my answer will come to me in terms of years. How long does it take to earn your present value? Correct? So the Macaulay duration answer when you write in your exam, write it as years. Don't forget it. Okay. Let's do a calculation and find. There is a three-year 10% coupon bond. Selling at 107.87 with a yield of 7%. Coupon bond 
coupon payment are made annually find macaulay duration now before doing this itself coupon is 10 yield is 7 i definitely know the price a premium bond you can even see that here it's going to be higher than 100 the face value okay now first let's find the cash flows i will learn 10 rupees every year first year 10 rupees second year 10 rupees third year also 10 rupees but third year with the 10 rupees i will get my face value of 100 as well okay i know my cash flows second step find the present value so in this process i'm going to find the present value of these cash flows adding these will get me the price of the bond here the price the bond is a correctly priced bond why price the true value is similar to the market ongoing price value as well 107.87 now i'm going to wait the duration now out of this 107.87 what is this 107.87 that is the true value of the bond correct i'm trying to reiterate for you all to understand again okay 107.87 that's the true value of the bond from this true value 9 rupees and 35 cents comes to me at the end of one year correct at the end of one year i will get that at the end of second year i will get 8 rupees and 73 out of this 107.87 final year i will get 89.73 out of this 107.87 now i have to wait the time relating to the cash flow so at the end of one year if i am getting 9.35 of 107.85 what is the real timing of that i will have to multiply one by the particular weightage here second year i will get 8.73 of 107.87 so here also i will wait the second year according to the weightage third year i will get 89.73 of 107.87 okay when you add all these I will get my Macaulay duration of 2.75 years. Why isn't it 3 years which is the maturity? Why isn't it 3 years? Because you 100% of your present value which is 107.87, 100% doesn't come at the end of third year you will get 9 rupees in first year second year 8 rupees and balance 89 only comes in the third year so your effective maturity in terms of present value is lesser than your actual maturity correct because part of your present value comes before so as we studied macaulay duration 2.75 years is always lesser than the maturity why is it happening like that because this is a coupon giving bond if it's a coupon giving bond part of your present value of that bond price comes prior to maturity here 9.35 8.73 comes before its maturity because of that the weighted time is lesser than the maturity okay now this elaboration now i have explained it to you the weighting and the time the equation given by macaulay is this okay what they have done is simply particular present value into the time divided by the price and addition of all 
rather than just giving the formula i have tried my best to explain to you the process behind it now the very first example is the detailed example why each exercise now here each cash flow is weighted 38 rupees of 981 comes at the end of 6 months so 3.88 is the weightage for 6 months here one year weightage is 96 just like that here also you can simply calculate your weightage separately and multiply it by the tenor one calculate the weightage separately and multiply with the tenor two calculate your weightage and multiply it with the tenor three what i have highlighted is ideally the weightage for that particular time the weightage tells you what kind of a percentage from that present value of the bond comes in that time okay now there's another key point i want you to highlight or i want you to remember macaulay duration always is calculated for number of years okay answer you get has to be in years so if you get now here in this particular practice question the tenors were annual so it was pretty much straight forward 1 2 and 3 were the timing but if you see here i would have used half year why i can't use in terms of months even if i use in terms of months i need to remember in my head that i need to divide it by 12 and arrive at the answer so to avoid that confusion when you give the timing best you always term it according to the number of years then it will be easier for you all right now we have understood duration or the macaulay duration how to calculate that now we understood bond price sensitivity as well now we said bond price sensitivity is how react or how reactive is that bond correct now to quantify that the measure was duration now we are trying to see whether the duration we calculated shows the same relationship whether the maturity is positively related to bond price sensitivity coupon is inversely related to bond price sensitivity and there is an additional uh, statement here as well whether the yield rate is inversely related to bond price sensitivity that's already given anyway they have a inverse relationship whether that can also be highlighted now we see this scenario with a practice question what is your practice question calculate the duration of the following assuming face value of rupees 1000 now all these five are taking uh, opportunities for you to practice macaulay duration calculations on your own okay so even though i discuss it here on your own please attempt it again on sunday when we send out the questions for discussion i will try to include a macaulay duration question there as well okay so this is the base case or this is the base question we are going to adjust these questions for each variable we are going to adjust the coupon and see the impact we are going to see adjust the yield and change the impact we are going to see the tenor and see the impact we are going to see the coupon frequency change on the duration impact as well now four year bond with 10% coupon where coupon is paid semi annually and the yield rate is 8 now just by looking at it 10% coupon yield is 8 obviously price of this bond has to be higher than 1000 set that in your mind before doing the calculation itself okay now 
let's get into the calculation okay first we need to know the cash flows we have the timing here can you see the timing i have given in terms of years we know duration is calculated in years so when i give the timing also i'm not denoting it in months i'm denoting it in years okay half one year one and a half year two year two and a half year three three and a half year four okay next is my cash flow 10% coupon but paid annual semi annual so 50 rupees each 6 months and at the end of fourth year 1050 all right next i will calculate the present value of these bonds present value is simply dividing 50 or multiplying 50 into this particular discount factor we already know that then we get the present value of these each cash flow and addition of all these present values will get me the bond price okay now can you see over here 48 rupees of 1067 comes to me at the end of 6 months which means 0.66% sorry Four point five percent of my present value comes up front. Okay, and due to these reasons, I should definitely know my duration or Macaulay duration has to be lesser than four years. Okay, now I can do it in two ways. What was the method that we discussed in our example? I will take the weightages first. okay i will calculate the weightages first which means this is the weightage over here for each period now when i add all this 100% so 4.5% of the present value comes in the end of 6 months then a 4.3 4.2 4 3.9 3.7 3.6 and 71.9% comes at the end of or the last period next what do i do i have my weightages now simply multiplying these weightages will get me my answer correct so this is the weightage what i could do is multiply the tenor i can multiply this particular tenor with the weightage and i will get my tenors and then by adding all this i will get my duration how did i do this i simply multiplied okay i simply these were the weightages i simply multiplied the weightage with the timing and got the effective tenors and addition of all these effective tenors got me a duration of 3.42 that was the technique we learned in the exam okay 
oh sorry in the example there is another method that you can try it as well now remember we had a formula no so for you to apply on that formula what you could do is you could simply multiply this present value by the timing as well you simply multiply the present value by the time get the addition of all this and divide this 3.75 by the present value of this bond by can you see the present value of the bond is common for everything so the same method but the i'm rearranging the steps time into the present va value of each cash flow is multiplied first and get the addition of that and simply divide it by the bond price again i will arrive at the same answer 3.42 so even though four years to maturity effectively in terms of present value i will learn my investment in terms of 3.42 years itself that's the macale duration what's the next question <coughs> four year bond with 6% coupon semi annual payment and 8% yield everything is same but now coupon has reduced so when the coupon reduced we know we know that the bond will become less valuable why it's a low coupon bond if it's a low coupon bond not valuable which means high sensitive bond the bond holders can easily exit from that bond when there is a market change so even before doing the calculation you should be knowing that this particular bond has a high sensitivity by the theoretical rationale tells you look here low coupon meaning this should be highly sensitive if it's highly sensitive what should be the duration will the duration be 3.42 or lesser no if it's high sensitive duration has to be higher than 3.42 get it it takes the maturity is effective maturity is even longer okay according to macale's thinking it takes much more longer time for you to earn your present value that's why you're discouraged hence this particular bond is highly sensitive okay so a low coupon bond before you do the calculation you should know will have a higher duration value now let's go to the exercise Sorry, 6%. Uh, I don't think I have done that in the Excel. Let's see. If it doesn't seem to be there, let's adjust it over here. So if it's 6, it will be 30. So the yield rate is same. Okay, not here. Let's adjust it down. Just the yield rate here. All other factors remain the same, but now the coupon has reduced, which means I am earning only. 30 rupees at the end of 6 months. So when all other factors are constant, my 
maturity is same i'm not talking about the duration just the maturity is the same my yield is same but my coupon is 6% which means who oh, 6% is for a year semi annually it will be 3 all right so 30 rupees at the end of 6 months my yield is no change 8% but remember 8% for a year hence i have taken 4% for the every 6 months i calculate you have to remember all this when you do the calculations okay so again according to that when i carry out the same steps you can see now the duration has increased earlier it was 3.42 now it was 3.6 why coupon has reduce so when coupon reduces duration has increased next we have again coupon at the same old level 10% coupon before we go to the third one let's jump into the uh, uh, fourth one so we have a 10% coupon same yield but the tenor has reduced from 4 year it has come to 3 years before doing the calculation what can you say about this bond tenor has reduced so is it highly sensitive or less sensitive this new bond with 3 years is it less sensitive or highly sensitive it will be less sensitive why right? i'm quickly earning my money it is only 3 years to maturity longer the maturity more sensitive the bond will be so without doing any calculation i can tell you that this particular bond will have a duration lesser than 3.42 let's see whether it's true Okay, that's over here. So it's a three-year bond. Coupon remains the same. Coupon remains the same. Discount yield rates are same. I carry out the same exercise, same level, same uh, techniques. Find the cash flows. Get the present value of those cash flows. add all of them find my bonds price which is 1052 then multiply the timing with the present value i will get the uh, weighted present value get the sum of that it will be 2800 that 2800 divided by 1052 i will get 2.67 years until or uh, it takes a weighted average year of 2.67 to earn the present value of this bond so can you see when the tenor decreased all other factors were the same duration decreased so just by looking at the duration now i can tell you that this particular bond has the least sensitiveness or that other bond is the highly sensitive bond okay we don't have detailed time to get into c and d but i want you to attempt all these five calculations on your own we will take it up from this particular point next week we'll discuss when the yield or the expected return changes what would be the impact on the bond and when the frequency changes what will be the impact on the bond as well okay because we don't have that much of time to talk about it in detail and then we'll have a summary we have a modified duration to learn as well because there are certain drawbacks in macaulay okay what were the drawbacks in macaulay duration the there were two drawbacks one is the answer was it in years okay if the answer it gave me a number to the sensitiveness but it was in years can i make financial decisions by that no it's not useful for me 
what would a proper portfolio manager expect they will want to know when interest rate changes by how much will this price change i need to know the change percentage as my sensitive measure not the years so for to understand that they introduced modified duration it's a modification done to macaulay duration correct this was the initial step so there were drawbacks on this to address the drawback modified duration came in so modified duration helped us to identify the impact of the change as well okay and then finally we have a concept called convexity to talk about and with that we'll be done with the debt capital lecture so we'll be done by it by next week and we should be able to start equity market next week as well okay so during that time you do have your weekly questions tomorrow as well apart from that i encourage you to attempt the macaulay duration examples on your own because here it tells your it tests your bond valuation techniques as well and it helps you to remember the formulas as well so there are five different calculations attempt that and also please reattempt this question as well why for you to get a hang on the bond valuation techniques all right so with that we'll wind up for today and we'll meet again next week so next week we would be starting equity market uh, equity market not the instrument because equity market is again a very hefty topic so we'll start with what equity is and we'll move on to equity market and then we'll follow it up with the stock market and the instruments all right thank you so much for listening in i hope you understood what we discussed today if there is any questions again i will share my email address here do drop me the questions and we'll discuss okay Thank you so much.